Muchísimas gracias por, por sus palabras. Uh, también un saludo muy especial a, a la señora uh, comisaria y estimada amiga Benita Guerrero Walmer. Uh, un saludo al señor ministro René Ramírez y muchas gracias por la inspiración que nos ha traído aquí sobre el conocimiento. Uh, señores embajadores, uh, señor rector, señores rectores de todas las universidades, señoras y señores, es un honor y un placer uh, dirigirme a ustedes en la ocasión de esta segunda cumbre académica de la Unión Europea CELAC. Y ahora voy a pasar al inglés y después terminaré, si me lo permite, en mi idioma, que es el portugués. So, um, your presence uh, here today from so many European, Latin American and Caribbean countries actually confirms that knowledge and science really have no boundaries. Not even a notion can keep our work at bay. So, as politicians, scientists, researchers, and academics, you form a global community, working together towards the same horizon and for the same noble objective. Nothing less than the progress of humanity. Taken together, the European Union and CELA represent 61 states. That means about one third of the United Nations members and more than one billion citizens. Faced with the pressing challenges that affect us all, Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean have a great affinity. This is actually the result of our shared history of strong socioeconomic relations, trade, investment, and important for us here today, profound academic and scientific ties. But ultimately, it is a result of our shared principle and values. It is actually our cooperation in research and innovation that has flourished and strengthened over the years, both at the bi-regional, but also within the individual cellar countries. Since the first bi-regional summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1999, the importance of academic and scientific exchanges between our regions has been recognized by the heads of state and government of the European Union, Latin America, and Caribbean. This was actually reiterated by the Madrid Summit in 2010 and the Santiago Summit in 2013. Since then, our political leaders have consistently given priority to higher education, to science and technology. And I think that important new decisions have been taken, like the creation of the Euro-Latin American Knowledge Area, or the Joint Initiative for Research and Innovation. In the short time since its launch in 2013, the Joint Initiative Research for Innovation has succeeded in creating valuable dialogue on areas of common priority in research and innovation, pulling financial resources from different European and CELA countries for cooperation and concrete research actions. And during the seven years, Europe's previous research funding program, known as Framework Program 7, I think probably a lot of you don't know, but over 750 CELA partners were supporting in cooperative projects with as many as 2,900 Marie Curie grantees from the CELAC countries. Taken together, that actually amounts to around 100 million euros from the Framework Program 7 granted to CELAC participants. This is actually an achievement entirely down to your own, to your own excellence in research and scientific endeavor representing a tremendous partnerships for the EU. So today more than ever, the European Union wants to stand as even a stronger global partner to you in research and innovation. And I wanted to tell Minister uh, that you said um, how difficult it is and uh, how important it is actually for Latin America and 
you said it very well, Minister, to really create knowledge. I think that what I've shown here is that you have that knowledge, you have that potential, and that potential is already recognized. Of course, we should do more and we should go further, but you have that potential in your academia, in your people and your researchers. So, a period of political and economic hardship has thrown into stark relief the benefits of research and innovation in stimulating economic growth, employment and societal well-being. So, the more open we are in this increasingly globalized world for the 21st century research and science, the better our ability to learn and adapt will become. Sometimes people ask me what's my project for the future in terms of science. And I always say that my project is open, is about open science, is about open innovation, and is about to be open to the world. But more than that, I think that we recognize the power of research, science and innovation in bringing different peoples of the world closer together. United in our innate curiosity and desire actually to explain the mysteries of the universe. Science diplomacy and international cooperation help us to understand our previous and our precious planet from a vital diversity of perspectives. And science diplomacy and international cooperation help us to tackle the challenges that we all face, such as maintaining global public health, dealing with human, societal and environmental consequences of conflict. Through science diplomacy, the scientific values of rationality, transparency and universality foster common understanding, build trust and promote cooperation between peoples, regardless of cultural, national or religious background. There is a strong human dimension to academic and scientific cooperation. Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean already share the same interest in cooperating in important areas such as health, renewables, energy, the bioeconomy, marine sciences, sustainable urbanization and so many others. We enjoy a friendship based on mutually beneficial cooperation that can only become more profound and productive. So Horizon 2020, the program that I have the privilege to run, actually the used latest and the biggest program in the world, we hope that we can actually be there because your science is good for us and it's not just about us to you, but also you for us. Contributing to improving knowledge in Europe and the world every day. So Horizon 2020 is based in three main pillars. The first one is about scientific excellence. The fundamental research that can drive us to the next level. The second pillar is about industrial leadership and how you can transform that knowledge into products. And the third one is a new way of looking at science, the bottom-up approach, what we call the societal challenges. You have a challenge and how can you solve that challenge? So it's a program that is fully open to the world. This means that researchers from Latin America and the Caribbean but also other regions of the world can work together with European researchers in practically every field of research and innovation covered by our program. What's more, Europe and Latin America and the Caribbean are perfectly positioned to create a common research area together. You know, we've, uh, we've been for 20 years actually looking at the European research area. And I think that we should now look at really the future, at the common research area together with Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean. And so count on my political will for that. One actually that builds on the EU CELA knowledge area and increases strategic research and cooperation between our regions. The first area in which we could step up our cooperation in this manner actually relates 
to the question of how best to connect the ongoing transatlantic activities on marine research in the North Atlantic and in the South Atlantic. Another potential area is renewable energy, including biofuels and geothermal energies, where many select countries have huge untapped potential. A third area, a potential common interest, is the testing of nature-based solutions for sustainable urbanization, disaster risk reduction, and tourism. And fourth is the development of climate services to support international and national decision making. So the EU is investing a great deal in this field through Horizon 2020 in the Copernicus Climate Change Service. We could, together, through regional climate service centers and sector-specific applications in strategic fields as part of an EU CELA common research area. But the creation of a common research area does not have to be limited to cooperation on thematic priorities alone. It could also include cooperation on funding research mobility, access to research in infrastructure and data, and of course sharing know-how and best practices. Researchers in Europe and Latin America are already working together every day on the most fundamental questions about life, nature and the advancement of humanity. Our regions are already united by the highest ideals. Our scientists, our scholars share the same motivation to work together to face global challenges and to improve the life of our future generations. They strive to identify ways to innovate existing technologies to ensure economic growth while preserving the planet. So we have come a long way together since the Rio summit in 1999. We are keeping together and we want to work more together, we do. We have the will, we can build on our past, past experience, and we can count on the stamina of our researchers to realize our shared vision for the future. We have all we need to build a common research area. What a wonderful journey it could be. I actually look forward to seeing you all at that destination of a common research area of us all. But let me finish in my own language, also a language of your continent. Desejo-vos a todos uma excelente cimeira. Ficarei à espera dos resultados das vossas discussões e da declaração de Bruxelas que vai resultar deste grande encontro euro, latino, americano e caribenho. Muito obrigado, muitas graças, thank you so much.